As a reminder, here's the general pattern for category two. Just like with category one, the nucleophile is going to attack and break the pi bond. But then, since this is now category two, a second separate nucleophile will come in. Well, in order to make room for that second nucleophile, we're going to have to kick off the carbonyl oxygen completely. We have to kick off the carbonyl oxygen completely, and it might leave as either hydroxide or water. So now we're going to have two separate nucleophiles on as our final product. And this really doesn't look like a carbonyl anymore, because the carbonyl oxygen has left. here we're not going to be doing any aqueous workup. So we can't, this, this is going to be different from Grignard's and lithium aluminum hydride. We're not necessarily going to need the aqueous workup anymore. Grignard's and lithium aluminum hydride have to be kept away from protons until the reaction is over because they tend to get destroyed by, by aqueous workup. So we have to save the protons till the very end. But many of our other reagents aren't like that. So we'll see that as we go on. So what, what type of functional group is this? What type of functional group is this? Oh, that's an alcohol. That's an alcohol. That's right. It's methanol. Uh -huh. This is methanol. And we're going to do an acid-catalyzed attack by alcohols. This is one of the most important reactions, an acid-catalyzed attack by an alcohol. And it turns out that that's a category two reaction. What does it mean that it's category two? It means that after the first alcohol attacks, a second alcohol is going to attack. Category two means that after the first alcohol attacks, a second alcohol molecule is going to attack. Now, the problem here is that the main steps are very simple. However, there's going to be lots of protonations and deprotonations that confuse people. The main steps here are very simple, but there's so many protonations and deprotonations that people don't know when to protonate or when to deprotonate. Well, hopefully the handout will help us to clarify that here. But let's look at the main reactions. What are the main reactions? Well, first of all, the first alcohol has to attack. And that's going to break this pi bond. That'll get us to here. And then the second nucleophile has to attack. And that will kick the oxygen off completely. Now, actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Going back to here, the first thing, so there's really three things that happen. First, the nucleophile attacks. And notice that this pi bond broke simultaneously. The nucleophile attack and the pi bond broke simultaneously. OK, and that would take us to here. And now we have two more changes that we have to make. Well, we use the protonated here. Well, that depends on the particular conditions. We'll get into the protonations and deprotonations oh. in a second. The protonations and deprotonations are confusing, so let's start by kind of focusing on the main parts of the reaction, and then we're definitely going to be careful about the protonations and deprotonations. The purpose of this up here is just to show us the main reactions. Mm -hmm. So the main reactions are first, the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon and simultaneously breaks this pi bond. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're going to have to go from here to here. Well, what are the two changes that have to happen here? One thing that has to happen is this oxygen has to leave. And the other thing that has to happen is this nucleophile has to join. Now, it turns out that at this point, these two things happen separately. First, this oxygen is going to leave, and then the second alcohol is going to attack. So the overall approach will be the first alcohol attacks and simultaneously breaks this pi bond. Then the carbonyl oxygen leaves. Then it gets replaced by the second alcohol. I haven't shown all those steps up here, but we're going to go through that in a second. Let's take a look at that in the handout. 
This is maybe the most complicated mechanism in the whole course. So, so here we are. So we're at the bottom of page one of the handout on aldehydes and ketones. Aldehyde and ketone. We start with aldehyde and ketone. Now, let's start by ignoring the stuff in parentheses, because the stuff in the parentheses is just the protonations or deprotonations. So let's ignore that. So the first thing that happens is that the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. And then there's two more steps. The carbonyl oxygen leaves, and then later, the second nucleophile attacks. So there's just those, main, those three main steps. However, there's all these protonations and deprotonations in parentheses that we're going to have to add as well. So let's go through that now. How do we know that we're doing this uh, part at the bottom of page one of the handout? Because we have an alcohol and acid catalyzed conditions. You can see that the bottom of page one of the handout here, sorry, is alcohol and acid catalyzed conditions. All right, so now let's go through that step by step. What do we expect to happen first here? Well, now we're going to pay attention to the parentheses. The first thing that happens is the carbonyl oxygen protonates. Mm -hmm. So let's draw the mechanism and the intermediate from that step. And here's the acid that we'll use. So this should be given. That's right. They'll give you an acid, or you'll okay. put in your acid. That's going to take that. Good. Mm -hmm. so this goes there. Good. That's right. Good. Let's draw the intermediate we get from that. safer to use sulfuric acid here. It's a little bit better to use sulfuric acid, so let's shift, so shift to that. The most important thing that you got right there is putting the positive charge on this oxygen. The whole purpose of this protonation is to put this positive charge here. So that was the first step in the method here at the bottom of page one. The carbonyl oxygen protonates. So now let's go along with that handout and see what's going to happen next. This is a complicated mechanism, so we're just going to follow this step by step. We protonated the carbonyl oxygen, and now the nucleophile is going to attack the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. Who is our nucleophilic atom in this problem? Who is the nucleophilic atom going to be? Remember that these were the reagents we started with over here. Who's the nucleophilic atom? Um, okay, so the OSOH or O3SOH, whatever, has um, a minus charge. That's true. However, the reason why this is a good acid to use here is that sulfate is not a nucleophile. Sulfate is not a nucleophile, so we don't need to worry about this acting like a nucleophile. Sulfate is not a nucleophile. That's why this is a good acid to use here. So who else do we have around that's a nucleophile? The well, pairs. the lone pair in this oxygen on this alcohol. Alcohols are nucleophiles. Alcohols are nucleophiles, so we can use this alcohol now as our nucleophile. As you say, we can use the lone pair. Now, by the way, alcohols are not, uh, now, and now alcohols are not very good nucleophiles. That's the reason we had to protonate the carbonyl first before it can be attacked. Because now that this has a positive charge, it's a better electrophile than it was before. So, if we're given a problem, we would see the H2SO4 and the CH3OH, right? And mm -hmm. we have to determine... If it was predict the products, okay. okay. And we'd have to determine which one we take the hydrogen from. Or do we always take the hydrogen from the acid? Well, yeah, because that's the acid. definition of an acid, right? An acid is somebody who wants to just donate a proton. Right. So we should recognize, oh, I know sulfuric acid. The one thing sulfuric acid is good at is giving people protons. So we would start by taking the, so we certainly would not want to have the alcohol give the proton here, because alcohols are not acidic. 
Sulfuric acid is acidic, but methanol is not acidic. Alcohols are not acidic. We kind of just have to have that memorized. We need to have memorized alcohols can be nucleophiles, but they're not acids. Or at least they're not very good acids. Whereas obviously sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. So we have to protonate the oxygen to make it really electrophilic so it can be attacked by a weak nucleophile? That's exactly right. And it should be clear to us why this made this a better electrophile. Things with positive charges are better electrophiles. Right. Things with positive charges are better electrophiles. 